Kualitanali Juan Miawe. In the spirit of Rupert and Jeanette Costco's founding relationship to our campus, we would like to respectfully acknowledge and recognize our responsibility to the original and current caretakers of this land, fire, water, and air. The Kawia, Tongva, Luceno, and Serrano peoples and all their ancestors and descendants, past, present, and future. Today, this meeting place is home to many indigenous peoples from all over the world. And we extend this to acknowledge the multiple fraught histories of this land. We also acknowledge the ancient relations of friendship, kinship, and alliance between various local native communities and visitors to this region. And we continue to work creatively towards enacting a practice and policies that register these histories and strengthen these layers of knowledge and ways of being. Vlatsokamatli, Achama, thank you. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous Cry. O'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red air, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Along with Chaparral is the result of a partnership between UC Riverside, the Riverside Temecula and Beaumont Unified School District, and Sherman Indian High School. Since 2018, the project has involved hundreds of K-12 students, teachers, university faculty, and graduate students in learning about and honoring the legacy of those interred in the Riverside National Cemetery. The Along the Chaparral team has accomplished this through published anthologies, a GPS mobile app, public events, and more. Today's performances continue that work virtually and necessarily via video reflecting both the challenges of online learning during the COVID-19 pandemic over the last year, as students and teachers alike have had to adapt to remote forms of education and training, as well as the challenges the pandemic has presented to the health and to the sense of community shared by the family members of those buried at Riverside National Cemetery, with whom we have gathered in person for this event in prior years. This video, then, offers a digital tribute allowing everyone to remain socially distant and safe while still honoring and paying respect to the veterans and their dependents interred at the RNC. Our performances today feature students from the Highland Academy Charter School in Beaumont, California, under the tutorship of teacher and project fellow Jasmine Smith, Martin Luther King Jr. High School in Riverside, California, under the tutorship of teacher Jalen Barnard, and graduate fellows from the University of California, Riverside. <laughs> This is in memory of Joseph S. Gamez. Joseph Gamez was born in the small town of Aurora, Missouri, and spent his childhood in a state filled with wide open streets and friendly townspeople. He was constantly surrounded by the snow with his time in the state. He married Bertha Louise Gamez, who he possibly met after the war. Bertha was the one person he could talk to about anything such as his time in the war or his experiences around the globe. 
After the wonderful time he had spent with his wife, he passed away and was buried in Riverside, California. He served in World War II when he was a teenager, but lied about his age, showing true patriotism. It was hard being so young and expected to go into battle. He made friends along the way after he had enlisted, but soon got separated due to the ensuing battle around them. The mental trauma received being so young must have had a toll on him, but at the same time he grew in experience. He had the rank of staff sergeant before he stopped his service, allowing him to lead other people who sought to defend their country. Another possible chance for him to make new acquaintances. After a long, hard fight, he was wounded in battle and received a Purple Heart. He loved his wife after the war ended and married her. He had no kids, so his entire world was surrounded by her. He had been to many places on earth, such as the south to the west coast, as well as across the seas. He could have been very knowledgeable about the world around him for his experiences. This life he lived was filled with love, hardship, and challenges. But nonetheless, it was a life he loved. My name is Tiffany Arnett. I'm an 8th grader at Highland Academy Charter School. This piece is in honor of Sue Ann Arnett, my grandma. It was the year, 1945, in August. A mother shed happy tears as her sixth child was born. But as this mother cried tears of joy across the cold, raging Atlantic Ocean in two cities called Hiroshima and Nagasaki, many mothers shed tears of sorrow, mourning over the devastation of their home, their displacement, and the staggering death toll in the wake of the dropping of the atomic bomb. Sue Ann Arnett was born in Muggsgin, Michigan, <clears throat> in August 10, 1945, to Charles and Noreen Cramblett. Her full name was Sue Ann Noreen Cramblett Arnett. She lived her life faithfully serving the Lord. When she was young, she grew up on a farm with horses, chickens, goats, and sheep. She also had a cocker spaniel. Imagine smelling decaying potatoes almost every day of your life. That was just a typical day for Sue. She went to Calvert University in Kansas City, Missouri. She, in she earned her teaching degree there, and started teaching third grade in Pensacola, Florida. When she started teaching, she drove a convertible to work. But this school had neatness and order, so you can probably imagine the look of horror on the principal's face. At Pensacola, she met the man she loved for the rest of her life, Alan Wayne Arnett. They married in September 1969 on the 27th. Alan was a man in military. He was the captain of the Marine Corps. One of the first churches they went to in California was Emanuel Baptist Church. Sue and Alan were blessed with two sons, Jonathan and Todd, two daughter-in-laws, Sherry and Joanna, and six lovely grandchildren, Jackson, Aaliyah, Kendallin, Timothy, myself, and Ellie. Sue Ann Arnett was a godly Christian woman. She had love, passion, and respect for her family and the Lord. She believed, above all, that all people needed a relationship with the Lord. On March 16, 2015, when I was eight, Sue Ann passed from this earthly life to be with her father above. On her gravestone, we wrote, Faithful wife, mother, and servant of Christ.
Hello, my name is Elizabeth Park, and my piece is written in honor of Frank Augustine Abishirley. Frank Augustine Abishirley was born on May 12, 1934, in the warmth of a sunny town known as Imperial County in California. He grew up in his childhood home, buzzing with conversations between his parents and his older brother, Ben Abishirley. Their home was located on Pine Streets in San Bernardino, California, where Frank resided for the majority of his life. It is unclear at what age he joined the Army. However, Abba Shirley enlisted in the U.S. Army as a private, partaking in a role to serve his country. As a private, it is to be believed that he received basic training as a soldier and learned the traditions and core values a soldier held as part of the U.S. Army. This training included rigorous activities that were instilled for soldiers to develop survival skills and to better themselves as a soldier. During the course of Abba Shirley's training, it is assumed that he went through the hot, humid days of land navigation courses, obstacle courses involving 50-foot structures to climb, and the dark, chilly nights of training to be prepared to serve his country. His dedication and courage towards his decision to serve his country should be admired and remembered. Like all who decided to dedicate their lives to the Army, Frank Abishirley is imagined to be brave and courageous during his lifetime. Along with this, he could also be seen as caring, being surrounded by a full family with his parents and an older brother to look up to as well as a wife and four children later on in his life. Abba Shirley resided in California for the majority of his life as a local resident, feeling the sun shining on his face and the breeze pass by as he spent his days with his family. Though Frank Augustine Abba Shirley was a local individual in California, his devotion and loyalty towards his country and these attributes that characterize him clearly display the need for respect and remembrance of his life. Hi, I'm Autumn Mock. I am a seventh grader for Highland Academy Middle School, and I have written a poem in honor of my great grandfather, Donald Bruce Otis. Donald Bruce Otis, what a small little name, tiny but mighty, some people say. Did you know he fought for our freedom, flying planes in the sky, risking his life every breath he took, leaving his family and all the tenderness back home? Do you still think it's a small little name? On February 29, 1924, a hero was born in a small little town in Minnesota. A little boy grew up. He played the same games and he went to the same schools. He was just a boy named Donna Brasidas. When there was commotion about the war, he went and signed up to be in the sky. Flying as a pilot seemed easier than crawling through mud. As scary as it was with all the stories of crashes, he made it the training with his friends by his side. The young man, sturdy and bright, was ready to prove his name that very same night. The camps were not easy, most people died. The food tasted like dirt, but Donna didn't mind. Waiting for World War II and missing his family, he reminded himself, never gave in. A plane wrinkled into smoke and Donald cried out. Swerving around the heel must fell out. Before he knew it, a gun had shot right at his leg but missed by an inch. Donald was lucky, that was for sure. At the end of the war, he helped bring the displaced families back home. Although his hands were blistered and frail, he made sure every family was finally safe. He wished he had his own family, but he stayed and helped as a hero would. He felt the soft sun as he got out of the cab. His mama was waiting to see him at last. When she saw his smoke smelled clothes and when she saw his eyes deep with shadows, she could not wait to bring him home. Quicker than quick, his mama matched him up with a pretty young woman named Mabel Phillips. He adored her loving nature and married her soon after. With a white shirtless dress and passion in their hearts, they never looked back. Soon after, they had a little boy and another one two years later. Six years later, they had a girl. They were they had three kids and were as happy as could be. The years went on, the kids got married, they ended up with 11 grandchildren. Donald passed on his st stories generation to generation. He was a hero who had saved us all. Tiny but mighty, some people say, risking his life every breath he took. Do you still think it's a small little ring? <laughs>